Okay, our next speaker is Dr. Leo Cheway. Dr. Leo holds a bachelor's degree in electrical and electronics engineering, a master's degree in electrical engineering, and a PhD in electrical engineering specializing in micromechanical systems or MEMS from the University Technology Malaysia. Uh, Dr. Leo has got more than 20 years experience in engineering software development, uh, consultation, training and industrial automation. And the title of Dr. Leo's presentation is Using RT Thread for Industrial IoT. So welcome Dr. Leo and uh, over to you. Hi. Yeah, good day to everyone. Yeah, no matter what is your time zone. Um, I'm from Malaysia. So uh, actually it's kind of 3 a.m. now. Um, so I have 30 minutes. So let me just share my screen. So um, today I'm going to share about using RT Trade for industrial IoT or in short form IIoT. So this this is what I'm going to show today. Yeah, uh, I have uh, one of the bot that actually support RT Trade. It's called AtPi that you can see here. And as you can see um, on the screen, when it is actually booted on the terminal that I'm connected to the IDE, I can see the AtPi uh, RT Trade system. You can see Trade Operating System 4.03. So in industrial IoT, very often we want to actually connect an uh, industrial device rather than uh, the hobbyist device or simple sensor um, through the IoT. So uh, let me just illustrate using a diagram, right? Um, if you can see here, uh, an industrial IoT, or in the old name, I would say it is called SCADA, right? That's why I put the name SCADA here, supervisory uh, uh, control and data acquisitions. Um, in a typical industrial environment, you actually have many machines. So here I illustrate by having machine one, machine two, and another uh, injection molding machine. Maybe you actually have a PLC, programmer logic controller, uh, connecting to many sensors, and this PLC will actually send the data through network, either wire or wireless, to a client on the same network, or actually go through what we call a gateway that eventually go to the local area networks of the companies. And this will actually connect all the way up to other uh, client. Those are maybe like another plant, maybe the production manager that is not sitting beside the machine, right? So this is typically uh, what the inside the industry have. Nowadays, when we call about IoT, like industry, Internet of Things, um, from the central database called DB, uh, we, it probably can be a cloud system. It probably can be an on-prem system that actually connect to the internet. And uh, from here, we actually can remote access from uh, from uh, through the internet. So, so let's narrow down to here. So um, there are many things that actually the RT trade can as, can be used in the industrial IoT. For example, I put it as a gateway. Today, my topic is using the bot as a gateway. So for a gateway, typically, as you can see here, it just need uh, some connectivity to the network or some protocol that is supported by the sensor. For example, there are sensors that is using Modbus RTU, uh, RS4X5. There are sensors, that are, those are sensors that are actually using uh, RS232 or maybe just voltage. And uh, a bot like this actually can collect all this data or it can actually also become a, a full gateway that connect to the PLC. Okay, this is the background. So, um, I, I want to share about my 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 uh, exploration using RT Trade. So first of all, uh, if you want to use the RT Trade uh, on the board that I have, uh, we install the RT Trade as the uh, RT IDE, and from there. We have the SDK manager, and we actually can select my bot. The bot that I actually having here is this. So I select it, and then I will actually uh, see it. Uh, it's a SDM32 has 750 base, right? And uh, then, uh, of course, the first thing that we want to know uh, is whether it works or not. LED blinking is always the first thing, right? Um, 
so um, this is uh, this is what I do. Like typically, we do a LED blinking, and then you will see the board uh, blinking. Yeah, the LED. This is LED. Okay, so once it's actually uh, done, we can actually uh, see how we actually make it in practice. So, um, in fact, for this ArtPi board, right, there is actually a, a GitHub uh, that basically I follow to uh, to learn up my way of using RT thread. Okay, so I actually just give some uh, visual diagram before I go to the demo, right? Uh, this is actually the starting page on the GitHub. Um, here they, they even explain like how the IoT works, right? Uh, there are sensors and actuator. Sensor means something that actually give you that uh, give you data. Actuator means something that you let make it move like moto uh, things, and it go through the gateway, and the gateway will actually go to the crowd. So um, and eventually this this crowd, the IoT crowd, can be assessed by other people or other programs. So this is why it is called the uh, industrial IoT. It's like it's not moving. Okay. Yeah. So uh, again, I go back to my uh, bot. So um, so first of all, uh, in order to use this bot, we need to install the ST link. Yeah. So uh, make sure that you actually have the ST Micro Electronics ST link virtual com port and the ST link debug. Yeah. Um, and let me explain in slightly more details the example that I'm going to show. So in IoT, one of the popular protocol nowadays actually called the MQTT, right? Because uh, it is very low, uh, it, because it requires very low bandwidth and very fast. In uh, actual industrial things that I have done is a traffic light. I actually have tried to send a uh, few hundreds traffic light, everyone at two millisecond interval, and the MQTT can still take all the package, right? All the data. Uh, just that you need to implement maybe a queue system to actually uh, queue it to the PC because the PC is more, much lower. So in this case, uh, we have H device. So it may be a PLC, it may be sensor. And now you see the arrow here, the MQTT is uh, having by direction. So when we actually do like this, right, uh, the, the gateway is actually uh, becoming like a, a, a broker. Right? You can say that the gateway in this case is becoming a broker to actually send and receive all these uh, data. So uh, when the so there is a there are some concept here. So for MQTT, there is a publisher and subscriber. So for example, this edge devices is publishing the MQTT package to the broker. Uh, then this can be actually a uh, subscribe like in this way by another edge device or subscribe by the cloud. Uh, but um, because we are having a gateway over here that subs that actually have multiple interface, you can also connect it through other protocol like Modbus in this case for interfacing to the SCADA system or implement a full RESTful API for web uh, for web API for so software, human machine interface. So um, I, some of the speaker have mentioned already in uh, in the IDE you can actually. Uh, install the RP trade package. In this case, I just put an example of uh, uh, of my example. Uh, once you go into IoT, you can actually select things like the mode bus, free mode bus, and they actually give you the details. And once you actually uh, install it, you, you actually can set, uh, can enable it and can set the setting. Like for this case, uh, which COM port we want, we want to talk to. And um, for this purpose, uh, we also need to install the MQTT. So on the package manager, there is this MQTT called Kawaii MQTT, uh, which uh, we install. And again, we do some settings. The setting that we have done here is actually to enable it and also to set the uh, timeout thing. Yeah. Oh, uh, OK. For this particular bot that I have, um, I'm, I'm going to enable the Wi-Fi. Right, so uh, under the RT trade settings on here, you actually can go to the hardware portion and enable the Wi-Fi. Uh, once we actually do all these settings, uh, including uh, including installing the MQTT package and the Modbus package, we need to actually build and uh, fresh the fresh into the board again. So in this case, I actually show the uh, screenshot of uh, once we actually fresh the and with the and Wi-Fi enable, we actually can see the Wi-Fi being initialized, and we actually can connect 
to the Wi-Fi. In this case, I connect to my home Wi-Fi, right? And then it actually have an IP address. And uh, why I want to do so is because the MQTT will uh, connect to internet. Okay, so um, before we go to the actual demo, uh, this, this will be some of the setup. So once I actually connected to the Kawaii MQTT by running the KA MQTT uh, through the package, um, we need to actually uh, use a client uh, to test. There are many MQTT clients, and uh, this MQTT box is, uh, is available as an app on the Chrome browser. So of course, when we actually uh, have the client, you will need to do some setup. In this case, uh, what is the uh, host? Who is the host? And then we connect to it, right? So, um, so before I actually go to the demo, that will be my final things. Let me just explain in slightly more details. So um, let me just slightly go back to this slide. So as you can see, uh, in order to uh, make the MQTT work, someone need to uh, post data, uh, publish data, and, uh, and uh, subscribe to the MQTT data. So in here, it actually show all the settings. So let's look at the red color uh, things first. So in the settings of the MQTT box, um, uh, which is the computer, the computer will actually subscribe to this topic called RTT slash Jiawei slash sub. Jiawei is my name. And correspondingly, this will actually, uh, one, it actually successfully run. You can see that actually it will uh, receive the subscription, subscribe topics. and and this actually is programmed onto the AppPy, the microcontroller board, uh, by like uh, by uh, by this command MQTT subscribe. So likewise, the other way around, uh, there is a publish, right? So for the computer, it subscribe, and for the microcontroller, it publish. So as you can see here, the line thirty eight, we actually publish the topic RTT Chiaway Pub. And for the computer, it actually subscribe the topic RTT Chiaway Pub. And because the message that we actually compile and build and send is actually this is a Kawaii MQTT test, you actually get the uh, message. So uh, with this, let's see uh, the demo. I, okay, actually I have the, uh, uh, let me unshare the, uh, okay, let me just still show the screen. Okay, uh, before I showing my hardware, okay, which is just beside me. Okay, so on the, this is actually my uh, IDE with the bot connected and it's actually running. So you see here, actually right now, uh, I'm going to send something from the MQTT box. So right, let's say I say, uh, good morning. Right, you see that the message, good morning. Yeah, it's been sent. Okay, and likewise, uh, the subscribe will actually keep on uh, keep on getting data because we are uh, sending this data, Kawaii MQTT test. So of course, because this one has already been built and fresh into it, so I couldn't change the message on the fly. So this one, I'm not going to review it. So I hope everyone will understand uh, this step. So with this, right, I want to actually uh, uh, just show uh, the bot. So there's another thing that I can do, right? Uh, yeah, um, talking about the LED blinking, yeah, this particular uh, exercise that's actually available online by following the tutorial by AppPy, um, you see that actually is doing an LED blinking. So first we actually define the LED blinking uh, pin and every time it actually receives uh, something, right, everything it receives something, it will toggle the LED, right? You can see that these two lines are actually toggling the LED, right? This, this particular things. So uh, that means to say every time I uh, every time I actually uh, press publish, uh, something will happen and the LED will change. So with this, right, I actually want to just show the the bot beside me. Right, you can actually take a look at this LED. Right, the light will kind of like change uh, every time I actually press publish. Yeah, can you see that it now changed to blue color? And if I press, yeah, let me just pull it up to let you see. All right, when I press publish, it will say good morning again, right? And the uh, and the uh, the LED will change. 
I press again. So now it changed to red and there is a good morning again. So let's say I put good morning five. See the color change one more time. So, OK, what is the importance of this? Uh, it's because. Let me go back to the. Uh, screen sharing. Sorry, uh, before I send to screen sharing. OK, what is the importance of this is because other than uh, getting uh, subscribed, we can also publish to the MCU. And the importance of this is got because uh, since this is a gateway, it probably will, uh, will connect to things like uh, PLC. This is actually a PLC. Right? How it can connect is actually like PLC. Normally, uh, the advanced one actually have a connection like Ethernet, like this. And, uh, and for this board, later I will show, it even come with a, a IO expansion board, industrial IO expansion board, and uh, that actually can connect to the PLC, to the HMI, and even to like flash and measurement instrument, right? Uh, uh, depending on what kind of interface that you have. So this actually will open up uh, to all the possible industrial IO. So with this, let me just uh, share my screen again to conclude my talk today. Yeah, sharing my screen and then go back to the slide. So uh, so I want to conclude my talk with a last few slide. Okay. So in short, uh, relative to uh, many I operating system. Uh, I, I would think the RT thread is actually easy to use, uh, especially how the way that it actually install library like compared to some other uh, IoT system that I try, especially those that run on Visual Studio Code. You actually will have like naming problem kind of things like uh, I don't want to name it. OK, right. Um, so these are some of the resources. If you are interested to actually look at this bot, uh, is able to run RT thread. So uh, of course you can download the RT Trade Studio. You go to the getting started to look at the example, uh, which is my example is basically from there. And it, like I say, it even come with a industrial expansion board uh, that have Ethernet, IS-2, T2, IS-485, CAN bus, of course IO, and even touch screen. Okay, with this I actually uh, want to uh, end my sharing. I think I'm running ahead of time to save some time. So uh, myself, um, OK, these are myself. Uh, I actually stay in Malaysia and uh, and that's my LinkedIn. And I run a company that actually uh, do industrial automation and software and cloud. Okay, thank you.